and welcome to This Week in Social Justice. I'm Daisy Cousins and I'll be discussing all the biggest and baddest social justice fails of the past seven days. This week we have why Louis C.K.'s critics seem to think he's magically become right-wing, the women's march that was cancelled for being way too white, and depending on how long I feel like talking about the first two topics, we may even have time for a bonus topic. So, let's get started. But, while I have your attention, hit that subscribe button pretty please. It super duper helps me out when you do that. Alright, here we go. Comedian Louis C.K. has once again been a very naughty boy. Almost a year after his epic hashtag MeToo mea culpa, he has launched somewhat of a comeback tour. Audio was leaked on December 30th of a fresh new comedy set performed at a club in Leverton, New York. And boy, did it get a few knickers in a twist. Hypersensitive millennials and their gender non-binary counterparts, not to mention what appears to be the Parkland shooting survivors, is no doubt sensitive subject matter to form a comedy routine about, and he certainly has used some closing lines that make you wince. However, it's really quite banal by Louis C.K. standards. Nevertheless, it got quite the reaction on social media and also from culturally progressive journalists. Many insisted it was inappropriate to punch down by poking fun at gender non-binary people. Others were outraged by his mocking of the Parkland shooting survivors. The offence taken by many at these jokes is entirely predictable, but also understandable. Louis C.K. is known for choosing delicate topics and for hypersensitive comedy as a result. Taking a stab at the radical gender crew is poking a stick at one of the progressive left, or should I say, regressive left's sacred cows, and I think anyone can understand why some people would arc up at making fun of school shooting survivors. However, the surprising and somewhat concerning common denominator here is that some commentators have decided to label Louis C.K. as right-wing as a result. Writers at left-leaning publications such as The Daily Beast, Vulture, W Magazine, and Out Magazine, as well as large numbers of the culturally leftist Twitterati were gleefully tarring him with a right-wing brush. This is regardless of the fact that Louis C.K. publicly supported Hillary Clinton. I'm going to vote for Hillary because yeah. uh, I think she's great. It's not a sec like a lesser of two evils. I think she's great. Has compared Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler and called him a lying sack of S-H-I-T. You did email your fans last yeah. year and you said that Donald Trump was an insane bigot yeah. and Hitler. Okay? Yeah. You did I say did. that, okay? and has been beloved by the cultural left for decades. So, how has Louis C.K., a seemingly avowed American leftist, suddenly and magically crossed the political floor? Well, it's quite simple, really. In the pea brains of the SJW regressive leftist media and Twitter hordes, anyone who puts even half a toe across the party line is punished. That's the nature of leftism. One ideological strike and you are out. But why automatically lump Louis C.K. in with the political right when he clearly does not have the same concerns or beliefs? I mean, sure, the right tends to be critical of the radical gender lobby, and in the USA, they do support the Second Amendment. But surely, those two little jokes don't mean that Louis C.K. loses his lefty card. See, the reason the regressive left is slapping the right-wing label on Louis is because they no longer use that term to refer to a political ideology. To them, calling someone right-wing is intended as an attack on their morality. In the millennial, culturally left-wing sphere, being right-wing is now synonymous with being wrong or immoral or evil. The term is used as an ad hominem coward punch, not as a descriptor for someone who believes in economic freedom and the significance of tradition. Therefore, rather than Louis C.K. simply copying the usual and oft-justified public chagrin over an offensive but pointed joke, he is being branded as evil simply for carrying out the duty the comedians have the burden of bearing, pointing out societal wrongs that no one else will address. 
That is how totally deluded, hysterical, and aggressive the regressive left has become. They are now so emotionally attached to their beliefs that they believe anyone who steps out of line is not only wrong, but evil and deserving of punishment. So you get all these educated and self-confessedly enlightened individuals working at these publications, knowingly spreading misinformation simply because they are determined to maintain cultural dominance. That is why anyone with half a brain cell loathes the progressive media. They are so transparent in their agenda. But as the saying goes, the right thinks the left are naive, but the left thinks the right are evil. Big difference. If you want to attack Louis C.K.'s morality, attack him for his sexual misconduct. But as for his poking a hole in your favourite cultural fabric, mm, sorry, that's not evil. That's just a comedian at work. Big, enormous social justice fail on this issue. It's January 2019, which means we are getting close to the two-year anniversary of the one and only Women's March. So, of course, all the different chapters are planning their annual events. Now, it's no secret that the Women's March has had a few problems recently, namely the rampant anti-Semitism from people like Palestine enthusiast Linda Sazor and Nation of Islam aficionado Tamika Mallory. However, this particular problem is slightly different, yet somewhat related. A women's march planned for January 19th in Humboldt County, California has been cancelled because the organizers feared that the committed participants were too white. According to a Facebook statement from the group, the local organizers are continuing to meet and discuss how to broaden representation in the organizing committee to create an event that represents and supports people who live here in Humboldt. Up to this point, the participants have been overwhelmingly white, lacking representation from several perspectives in our community. Instead of pushing forward with crucial voices absent, the organizing team will take time for more outreach. I mean, you'd wonder how these regressive leftists could hate themselves so much and have such profound white guilt that they would cancel an event that people have put aside time for simply because there are too many white people involved. It is unbelievable. But the thing is, and as people have pointed out, according to Census Bureau data from July, Humboldt County is about 74% non-Hispanic white. So if the organizers were looking to create an event that represents the people that live in the county, as they've stated, well, it appears they have succeeded. The other thing to note here is that maybe this white bread women's march hints at an uncomfortable truth about the so-called progressive left. While they tout themselves as the great proponents of racial diversity and say they're giving a voice to the poor and the disenfranchised, not to mention insisting that their views definitely represent the majority of the USA, a recent study by academics from the group More in Common has revealed that progressives only make up about 8% of the US population and are overwhelmingly white and rich. So really, it was futile of these organizers to cancel their event, because if they're looking to gather more participants from racial minority backgrounds, well, the numbers on all sides say that they'll probably fail to do so. Great, big, fat social justice fail on this one. Bonus topic! We have a bonus topic this week. Some interesting footage circulated on Twitter last week. It was what you'd call a kerfuffle over the accidental misgendering of someone who, dare I say it, looked very, very much like a man. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I can call the police if you'd like me to. You need to settle down. You need to settle down and mind your business, okay? Ma'am, once again, ma'am. I said both of you. No, you said sir. Once again, it's ma'am. I need your corporate number because I'm going to talk, call them and talk about how it's misgendered several times in this store. I need your corporate number now. Look, I don't really have much to say about this one. I mean, what can you possibly say about it except perhaps props to the shopkeeper for keeping his cool? Now, there are people who are defending this person and saying that those who are making fun of her are punching down and making fun of mental illness. 
Now, according to the regressive left, being trans or gender non-binary is absolutely not a mental illness. So I don't know what mental illness they're talking about, unless, of course, being a jerk is a mental illness. And secondly, if you are going to behave like this, destroy property, threaten someone with violence, etc., then I don't care if you identify as a pot plant, you deserve to be made fun of. Not for your identity, but for your bad behaviour. So massive social justice fail on this one right here. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for other ways you can support me.